So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, 10 ways that Android is better than iOS. Now we're gonna use the same phones here, the Pixel 4 XL, iPhone 11 Pro. Now I've been using Android for a long time, ever since you know I started with a Samsung phone like over 10 years ago. So definitely really do know quite a bit about this platform, but we're not gonna discuss everything here, but some of the reasons why. We're gonna begin with deeper customization. So what do I mean by this? Well. A lot of people are saying, well, iOS, there's no there's no reason now to buy an Android phone. You have widget support here for iOS. You have the app library. Why even buy an Android phone? Well, here is an example for you here. Well, you can go ahead and download millions, not millions, but tons of different launchers and get deeper into the customization. For example, if you want to run a Microsoft launcher, you use a lot of Microsoft services, there you go. You want to do more customization, Nova Launcher, super deep and rich in customization. You want something more simple, maybe you like the EV Launcher right here. I mean, there's so many different launchers out here that can just really help you out in finding the perfect customization for you. And not only that, it goes deeper than that. If you want to get some icons, you can go get different icon packs that will go within those launchers. And so you can see just plenty of customization here for Android. That iOS is nowhere near this level. Now, yeah, you can do jailbreaking and get close to that level, but this comes right on every Android phone. You don't need to do no rooting or hacking to get this stuff done. So you can just type in themes also. Let's type in themes and boom, there's tons of themes right there. Live wallpapers. I mean, there's a lot there when it comes to customization, live wallpapers, this is not the same for iOS. So definitely much deeper customization. This is on the Pixel phone. If you get the Samsung phone, you also have the Galaxy theme store, which is even more customization. So it's pretty much endless. Next up is far greater widget support. So you can see right here, tons of widgets in here. Whereas over here on iOS, you can see you're still limited by whatever's being developed right now. Certain apps will take advantage of this. And down the line, you're gonna see a ton more widget support for the iOS platform but right now nowhere near android level and again if you go to the play store here and you type in clock widget you can get all kinds of different clock widgets which is one we still haven't seen yet on the ios platform so definitely lots more widget support you can even download widgets directly from the play store so again with the customization deeper customization within the widgets and number three is still this ability to place your icons wherever you want on the screen this is totally always going to be more customizable because you can place the icon wherever if you want to make a little folder right in the middle of the page, you can go ahead and grab it. For example, a banking application and your calculator because you want to do some finances, some numbers. Right there, you can make this folder and place this folder up here. If you would like, you can place it next to this widget down here. Or maybe you just want it down in the corner. Or maybe you have a too big of a phone, you want some applications over there on the right side. You can go ahead and grab them so they're easy to reach with one thumb right here. So definitely more customization there. Whereas with iOS, you can still now, you can now remove apps from the home screen, send them to the app library, which is awesome. But at the same time, if I try to place this app here, it just flies right back up. So more customization with putting the icons wherever you want. And I, I know there's some ways you can do some wallpaper to kind of hide it, make it look like they're in different spots, but nah, I'm talking about put the application wherever you want directly in the software itself. Android still wins there. The next one is going to be related to split screen. So I can go ahead and split the screen here between different applications you can see. And this is true multitasking. Now I know we have picture and picture over here for the iPhone, but you can also do picture and picture on the Android phone. So definitely a true split screen. This was one of my biggest things that I was disappointed with iOS 14 is not seeing a true split screen for that software. So Android and Google are still winning here on split screen, super thumbs up there for me. I definitely like that for this, you know, Google Pixel 4 XL and many other Android phones out there. They pretty much all have it. Next up, I talk about this a lot, but in the camera settings for iPhone, if you go over here on iOS, you'll see that they do have some features now on the 11 Pro where you can change aspect ratio, stuff like that. I do like that stuff. And in video, you can go ahead and change the video settings here. So major improvements there, but there's something that's still better about Android phones than iOS and that if you go into the camera, 
you can basically get to your whole entire camera settings right here within the camera. This goes for pretty much every Android phone I've tried. Yes, the skins make the software look a little bit different, but at the end of the day, most of these Android phones, you can get to all your settings for camera right from the camera itself. It keeps you focused on your photography or your videography directly in that camera. Whereas over here on this iPhone, if I wanna to get to all the in-depth camera stuff, I still have to go into settings find the camera section and go through all of it right here. So it's still, you know, a little bit of a two-step process and it can be annoying, especially if you have your phone propped up on a tripod in landscape mode and you got to go back and your phone doesn't rotate because these newer iPhones don't rotate in the landscape. You got to go to camera. You know, if you're a photographer, videographer, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, you probably won't care. At the end of the day, it's still much easier to grab the camera settings directly in most of these Android phones these days. So definitely a thumbs up there. And number six, when I lock the screen, you can see support for always on display. Now, most Android phones do offer up this feature these days and the Pixel is no exception here. Whereas when you lock the iPhone, you basically don't get anything there but a black screen. So yeah, I would say definitely Android takes the win here when it comes to the always on display. Maybe we'll see this in the iPhone 12. We'll have to see, I'm not sure. But yeah, still always on display. Gives you quick notifications at a glance. You don't ever have to really unlock the phone or anything like that. Major thumbs up and win there for Android. Next one is multi-user support. So simply swipe up from or swipe down from the top and you could see right here in the pixel, it's right there. You can go ahead and add different users, different guests, stuff like that. Now you do have family sharing, which I mentioned why iOS is better than Android. But at the same time, I can totally be like, hey man, you wanna use my phone? Give me a second. I could put it in the guest mode and boom, it just puts you like in this little screen where like you can't see any of my apps or anything. So if you're trying to hand your phone to somebody, they want to use it a kid, or maybe you want to let somebody borrow your phone because their, their service just got cut off for a few days or for a day, you could just go ahead and just put it in guest mode. Be like, here, you can use my phone for a second because they likely don't know how to switch it back out. But at the same time, you can go right back to your, so your screen, the screen you want to be on really easily. And of course you've seen right there, it will lock it with the password so nobody can get back in if they do figure out that feature. So major win there for multi-user support, especially if you don't wanna buy multiple phones for the family. This next one kind of bugs me about iOS still, and it just seems like a just an extra step to do. Now I know it's first world problems, but still at the same time, you know, we're talking about why Android is better. So I'm finding reasons. So over here, if we scroll over, I can hit the clear all button and just clear all the applications right there on this Pixel device. And different skins, like on different manufacturers, sometimes they have a little X at the bottom, sometimes at the top, they have different ways of doing it. But pretty much all these Android phones have a clear all button, which will get rid of all those apps at once. Now with iOS, I do like how you can swipe two away or even three if you can get all your fingers on there. At the same time, you know, I still wanna see a clear all button. Now, Apple themselves say you don't really need to close your apps all that often, so maybe this don't matter to you, but I like to close my apps when I'm done using them for the day. Um, so yeah, I do like the clear all button here for Android. I think it's definitely a better reason to use this system over iOS. The next one is in the quick settings and the control center. So something about the control center that's neat is it just looks really polished. I really like the way the control center looks, but we're talking about why Android's better and it's this little icon right here. The ability to move, drag things around and add different features all with one little click away right there. With iOS, again, it's a, it's a two-step process. We're gonna go to settings. Actually, it's more than a two-step. We're gonna go to settings and we're gonna go to control center and then we're gonna move them around over here. We're gonna add them over here. So yeah, definitely extra steps to get your stuff in control center. Don't like that. I really wish that Apple would just include a little button that just takes us right to the control center. Even if we add one in the settings where we can get to the control center quickly, that would be nice because this is really easy to just go ahead and quickly move things around and set up your quick settings. And at number 10 is the Google Assistant is still better than Siri. I think it's more contextual. Like for example, let's play a game. All right, which one would you like to try? So you can see we do have multiple games here. It is listening to my voice, but we do have multiple games we can play in directly from that Google Assistant. Now, if I try that over here, Let's see this. Let's play a game. You can see right there, that is beyond my capabilities at the moment. 
on Siri. So, you know, things like this, like things that you wouldn't expect to do on your assistant, they're just there for the Google Assistant. And because you're coming directly from Google's the, the Google search, it's super accurate with results and answers when you ask questions. So Siri is great at setting alarms, calendars, reminders, stuff like that. But there's more contextual awareness here on the assistant. So it's still, I think, a better assistant overall. And if you want to say, well, it looks prettier, it's more compact. Well, Google already had that compact nature on the pixel. If you swipe from the corners, look how small that is. It's not even in the way at all. It's just a little Google bar down there so that's nothing new for the android side and so those are 10 reasons why android is better than ios 14 even after all the amazing updates to the software there's still so much more you can do with the android platform than ios ios remains still a pretty simplistic software with extra steps but you know you if you still like tinkering you can still do it here in android and i forgot to mention that while you do have the smart stack widget you're much more interactive here like i can actually interact with this widget right here i can add different tasks right here i can set due dates you can interact directly with that widget on the home screen whereas with the apple widgets over here they're kind of like just large apps to be honest you click that it's like clicking the weather app honestly or if you click this right here you know it doesn't do anything right there it just gives you a little look at the battery life now over here if i click this article it's going to go into the article Whereas, you know, on the Android phone, some of these you can click them and then they will give you options to play around with directly in the widget itself. So at the end of the day, there's many reasons why you would still want an Android phone here in 2020. I think the gap is closing incredibly well. It's getting to a point where, you know, it, it's really, really close. And either way you go, you're going to be very happy. I mean, this is much closer than it was years ago. Years ago, there was major differences between the two. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. Do you think that Android is still better than iOS after 14? Or do you think iOS has surpassed the Android platform. If you want to know why iOS 14 is better than the Android, I did 10 ways why that's better just yesterday. So you can click that link down below to check that one out. I will catch you all in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to stay safe, stay well. Nick here and peace.